So what kind of changes are we seeing? Please. Uh, more and more a celebration of student venturing, younger and younger. Okay? So Rutgers has some great foundational elements, of course. There's a lot of activity on campus. I love the story tonight of the engineering without boundaries. It's a very, very important thing to go into the field and be able to work on problems like that. But I want to point out other opportunities that we can, we can think about bringing to bring a much more rich entrepreneurial training experience to engineers at Rutgers. Okay? And to be able to punch above our weight class with the resources that we have. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about is leverage. I'm not here suggesting we compete with MIT or Stanford today. That's, that's not a realistic goal. Right? Those are institutions with histories that go back literally in some cases 150 years. But there's huge opportunity to take it to the next level. Okay? We're seeing young entrepreneurs trained. Um, some of you may have seen that the G20 summit most recently uh, began focusing on entrepreneurial endeavors as a way to try to fill the gap with the lack of job growth that we're seeing around the world. And so there's this huge effort to train high school students around entrepreneurship. The Indus Entrepreneur is a group I've proudly been a charter member of for a long time. For those of you who don't know, it's the world's largest entrepreneurial organization. It started as an organization to bring together the, the diaspora of Indian immigrants, both in Silicon Valley and Boston. Um, but they've now started the Thai Young Entrepreneurs Competition, where they actually have freshmen and sophomores from high school competing and collaborating with university researchers and getting in front of ballrooms of a thousand people and giving amazingly impassioned, eloquent presentations. Okay, so kids are getting the access to the stuff younger and younger. Next slide. Okay, there's been an explosion of business plan competitions in the Financial rewards get higher. Most of these now are offering $100,000 or more. But much more importantly, what they're offering is the mentorship, the long-standing mentorship that goes well beyond the check. Because a lot of young entrepreneurs won't know what to do with the money if they're not being mentored. A lot of you thanked your mentors tonight. Right? Mentorship is the rocket fuel for successful entrepreneurs. Next slide. Okay. We've seen new and ambitious engineering school collaborations. Of course, the Technion Cornell collaboration in, on Roosevelt Island, there's a lot more activity still that will probably be announced, and there's more and more opportunities to collaborate over time. Okay? The democratization of education. I've long been affiliated with MIT, uh, first as a senior faculty member and as a judge, and what they've done is they've pioneered open education. So every MIT course is online. Recently they introduced a new concept called MITx. MITx is basically a certificate or badging program. Some of you may have seen that the MacArthur Foundation, in, in conjunction with the Mozilla organization, are now generating badges as a way to distinguish certain skills. Right? So just another disruption in the educational continuum, just as we've seen the Khan Academy for, for elementary and high school students, and the story goes on and on. So this is just one example of an MIT basic electrical engineering course taught by a fairly legendary professor, Professor Agarwal, a uh, circuit course, being offered outside of the mainstream four-year degree program, now being offered online for a very nominal cost with a certificate to be given. Okay, next slide. So some lessons learned. Okay. It's not just about the business plan. Too many entrepreneurial courses ask students to spend an entire semester writing a perfect 40-page business plan. It's not about the idea. The idea, unfortunately, is about 1% of the success of the venture. Next slide. Okay. It's really, again, as I started off, about the passion. I borrow shamelessly from James Collins here, okay? the principal of the headshot. It's that perfect symmetry across this diagram. What are you passionate about? When I sit down across from entrepreneurs that I want to mentor or invest in or join the boards of, when the entrepreneur says, I know it's a big market and I know I can make a lot of money, I am completely turned off. But when I can see the fire in their eyes and I know that this is something that they will not rest until they get it done, that's the kind of entrepreneur I want to work with. Next slide. Okay. For those of us engineers in the room, of course, um, it's difficult, but God forbid we fall in love with our technology. I remember when I joined Hewlett Packard, um, we had a far better solution than digital did at the time. And it staggered me that many of our customers still decided to go with DEC in the early days of my time with Hewlett Packard. Right? They were making very practical decisions, taking a much more holistic view of the process than we as engineers. All we saw was our product. We were unable to put ourselves in the shoes of our customers. Okay? So 
So falling in love with your technology is a recipe for disaster. You've got to have the empathy and the humility to understand how your customer perceives the world and how you fit into that world. Okay? Otherwise, it's like this guy, Mr. Sisyphus. He's just pushing that rock uphill. And most startups that fail do it because they're, they're chasing the wrong end of the tail. Next slide. Okay? So last section here. Some, some additional changes that I think we can see. Please. Okay? When I started off in this business, you had to raise significant amounts of venture capital. Venture capitalists were kingmakers. Um, if they decided to invest with you, it was like winning the lottery. The odds were staggeringly against you. But if you raised institutional venture capital, you had a real chance of success. Since the financial crisis of 2007, the balance of power has shifted. A lot of these firms are laying off partners, they're closing down, they're struggling to raise capital. And so the way that we start companies today is by taking some of James Womack's lean manufacturing concepts and applying them to young startups. Okay? And, and basically the concept of the lean startup is king today. Do just as little as you need to do to validate your product in the market, use as little capital as you can, hire as few employees as you can, until you are absolutely certain that you have hit a harmonic residence need in the marketplace and the market is ready for you. And only then do you go out and raise capital. Okay. So you, you succeed by failing fast. And that's really what we try to do. As we work with young entrepreneurs today, we push them to hit walls and fail fast so they're able to figure out what the customer really wants. Okay. And so the acronym or the, the mantra today is think big, Right? We're not going to work with entrepreneurs that are not ambitious, but at the same time, we want them to be realistic in how they get started. So start small and grow fast. Okay? Increasingly democratized sources of capital. Kickstarter. Kickstarter is an online site that anybody in the room can go and pitch your idea, create a video, and you can raise money from individuals for the first time. There's an act before Congress that Senator Brown from Massachusetts has uh, put forward called the Democratic democratization of Capital Act. Um, it's going to allow individuals, everyone in this room, to invest $1,000 a year in startups, okay, to take away the gatekeeper. Okay. And finally, mentor capital programs. Mentor capital programs are the next wave of entrepreneurship and innovation. What we're seeing today is that we're getting companies launched in 90 days. What mentor capital programs do is they bring a lot of experienced entrepreneurs to a city, to a region, you typically go through a very competitive application <coughs> progress process where eight or ten teams are selected and they're given 90 days of intensive mentoring by a group of experienced entrepreneurs. The success rates coming out of these programs are remarkable. We're seeing in some of the top programs 80, 90, or 100 percent of the companies are getting funded coming out of these programs. Nothing like it's ever been in the past. Okay? Just a couple of examples of some accelerators that focus on engineering design. One of them is the accelerator in Providence, Rhode Island that Ely Scheitpak, the Rutgers musician that I spoke about earlier, is now incubating that. It's called Beta Spring. And this is an example of a company called New Label. New Label was attacking a problem in, from their Brown University senior design project. And they were asked to basically challenge the way that labels are printed for high volume manufacturers and retailers like Walmart, FedEx, UPS. About half of the size of the roll is wasted, half of the cost is wasted. They were able to go back and re-engineer the entire process by making these uh, adhesive activable products and they were able to bolt them onto existing laser printers and, and label printers and they've now got the top customers in the world on board. They've just raised five million in venture capital. Next slide. A uh, company called Green Goose that is trying to bring an online gaming experience to kids. They help them. Um, have a better daily experience at managing healthy habits, so it's a way to keep harmony in the house. So they were able to squeeze a microprocessor, a wireless chip, um, an accelerometer, and a battery onto something the size of two postage stamps. And they actually put those on everyday items like toothbrushes, and hairbrushes, and dog collars. So if you're walking your dog, or if you're brushing your teeth, or if you're exercising, you're getting online points and you're competing with your, your siblings or competing with your friends. So they brought the world of the internet to life. Next slide, please. So Green Goose, the company I just referred to, went on stage at the biggest launch conference in Silicon Valley, walked off the stage with a half a million dollar check in about three minutes for what they're doing. That's the level of appreciation that entrepreneurs going through these accelerators are getting today. Next slide. So what does that mean for the rest of us in the audience? Okay. And what does it mean for Rutgers? 
again, we can't follow the patterns of MIT or Stanford. We've got to play our own game. And we can learn from our friend Billy Bean, the guy that figured out that he couldn't compete with the payroll of the Yankees and some of the other teams in the American League. He had to play his own game, which was how Moneyball was formed. So I'm going to ask you to advance one slide. So what are some of the strengths that we can draw upon? And I realize we only have a minute or two left, so I'm going to only highlight one. Great opportunity. There's such a fallacy about the lack of prowess of American manufacturing. Okay? American manufacturing is still very healthy and very strong. American manufacturing today would be the eighth largest economy in the world and was a standalone country. Okay? Our productivity has increased 4x since World War II. Okay? That's way more than any other industry that we know. Okay? It, it still comprises over 10% of U.S. employment. There's a real opportunity as manufacturing come back, comes back to the states to have Rutgers play a leadership role in driving manufacturing through the entrepreneurial world. Next slide. Okay. The second thing is to recognize that you're, you're two of the three largest risk capital markets in the world. New York City a few years ago had no real venture capital for technology and engineering. Today it's very quickly become the number three market in the country behind Boston. So your proximity to two of these three key capital markets I think is a real advantage. Next slide. So, I want to once again thank Tom, Kendra, and Lydia for a great event tonight. I want to thank you for this great award, um, and I'd love to be available to make myself uh, involved in any way possible to help Tom and Rutgers as you think about taking entrepreneurship to the next step on campus. Thank you.